I had a previous video showing the TD Ameritrade uh, API setup. This is uh, based on the new Schwab integrated platform. Uh, it's nothing big difference, but there are minor changes. I would like to go through it. Uh, here is a quick demo I have showing. I'll walk through one by one. You have to start with the developer portal. Here is the steps they have given for register, discover, build and deploy. I'm going to go through one by one. The doc money explains things, but a uh, few nuances not called out. I will go through them. So go to developer.shop.com. You have to register if you don't have an account. Go through these steps one through five. Uh, one thing to note is this login registration is totally different than the Schwab's login. So you have to be really like careful about it. So I have an account. So I'm going to sign in with my account. Once you log in, so you will land in this page. I already have an app. Uh, in your case, it might be empty. You have to start with creating an app. Uh, my app is already in production and ready for use. So go ahead and create an app. Select from the API product, which you need to register. Select that. Then give an order limit. This is nothing but per minute how many requests you need to handle. Give the app name and description. An important things to notice, entering the callback URL. Here I have given the loopback URL. I'll come into those details. So if you look into this, this is my app's detail. This is what I was mentioning about the loopback. You have to really give this 127.001 and this app key and secret, copy and store it somewhere that's needed. Uh, one quick note here as well. The app key is nothing but the client key. I will show you in short. So go and select this documentation and this will give you the list of all the APIs and the API spec what these APIs are required. If you go to the documentation they have listed out all the things needed for setting it up uh, but unfortunately if you read through it and set it up like it's pretty hard to go through uh, following this document that's why I have placed this video very neatly with each and every steps which will give you a clear idea. Okay, this is the AP key first authorization URL. This is the only URL you have to use the web browser. You need to construct this URL. The consumer key is the app key which I mentioned earlier. And the callback URL is the HTTPS colon slash slash 127.001. So once you have constructed the URL, you can copy them. Okay, go to the URL, uh, login. Okay, this login is the actual shop account login and not the one which you created just now or the app. That's the difference you really need to make sure because you need to now manage two accounts for login. Like one is the actual shop account and another for a developer portal. And you have to accept the terms and continue. And this is the app name you are giving the consent to. So accept them and if you have more than one account you have to select which account you want to give access to and done so it will end up in this page actually it is nothing wrong uh, it is returning a code which is very important and that can be copied only from the url so i have written this script in such a way that it passes the url get the code and proceed further so i will walk you through the script soon before that i will give you a demo so go through this one and the url is having the code it accepts it and it lands in a menu page the menu page gives you few options for getting an account and placing an order right and if you go and look into this particular api's details you can figure out what i am trying to say if you go here down this is the access token so once you have authorized the app the next step is to get the access and refresh token so the access token is where you are going to use in the following apis so you have to be having this code internally but the python script takes care of everything internally so no need to worry about it right now i am able to 
uh, I have I'm actually I have to get the account first because it is internally caching the account name and details. Uh, so once you get them, then you can fire those APIs. So if you hear like this is our account number, right? I'm trying to get this account details using this particular API. And one catch again here is the account have account number and hash value. So the API following them will require a hash value and not the actual account number. So you have to uh, use it accordingly. For this one, I am like showing a demo of placing an uh, SPY using this orders API uh, with a payload of uh, actually like filling this symbol with particular uh, quantity, uh, which I got in the as an input parameter. Uh, yeah, empty response means it is actually successful. So I am quitting the app and let let me dive into this code how I am uh, I have written this is a class which is having it in it so this client id and secret this is the one which i told you like to copy them you have to uh, import into the environment variable uh, for the security resets always good to have them in the environment variable and uh, first thing is like the url passing the url i'm getting the code from that one and that's a url encoder so you have to decode it uh, url decode and then use that and the client and secret are basically uh, encoded in uh, basic zipper. So you have to use that one. The, uh, the next thing is the code for tokens. And if you see like I'm uh, using all those access token to uh, place the order. And this is the function for getting the account info. Uh, this is the access token which I'm using. So if you go here and uh, into the document, it will clearly say the details of the API uh, which is required. If you look at it, the token type is bearer and then I have to pass in the access token and refresh token. The next is the refresh token. I have the API here. Uh, let me tell you why I need this refresh token. So if you look at this documentation, it says the refresh token expires in seven days. There are two tokens, which is the access token ref, uh, ex, uh, expires in 30 minutes and the refresh token expires in seven days. So every 30 minutes, you have to refresh the token. For that, you need a refresh token. So that way, the access token is refreshed. For refreshing the access to uh, refresh token, you have to really go through the consent pages, which is manually. So the next is like placing an order. This is the API I'm going. So this account number is where I told you it's a hash value and not the account number. So that is retrieved using this account API. So you will get the hash value here and then store them and then later use in the orders API. So it's like pretty basic template. Uh, it should be uh, easily readable. And I have this menu here, uh, which will explain the few steps and go through it, uh, each and every case statement is calling those functions provided above. Uh, it's pretty uh, simple. And you can see that access token and refresh tokens and the account numbers which are retrieved from the prior functions are used here in this mean. Hopefully you got a fair idea about like how this class is organized. And uh, the code access is given in the comments. Please go through it and modify according to your need. Thanks for watching this video. If you really like this one, please subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up. And if you really need more similar such videos, like post it in the comments and I'll try my best to post those videos. Thank you.